Thank this conference it. will now be recorded. And um, what I'll do is I'll spend the next, next 30 minutes just providing some some background to the, the tool. Um, and I am just trying to work out the controls here because for some reason the presentation is not moving on. Um, Tina, should should this just work automatically? Or is this uh, or, or is there a control I should be? It should work automatically. Can you click on the screen? Click on a PowerPoint screen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Perfect. Yep. There we go. Right. Thank you for that. So yes, what what I'll do in the next thirty minutes is is, is cover the following areas. Um, just a bit of background around Scotland to provide the context in which we are working in. Um, a general introduction to place health and inequalities, and many of you will be more than familiar with that. The origins of the place standard tool, its features, how we govern the delivery of the tool, both at a national and international level, and then I'll okay. share a few stories around around implementation and how it's currently being delivered um, and the lessons we're generating are from that. Um, so, in terms of the about communications, I would of course be criticised by my communication colleagues if I didn't share the at play standard uh, Twitter feed. So please feel free to join that and, and, and make contributions to that uh, after today. Um, so Scotland, um, I'm sure many of you have, have, have been uh, been here before, uh, but it's certainly not this. Um, and it is more this, where we've got um, a, a population of just over 5 million, and that was in 2014. It's, it's expected to increase to 5.7 million, but I don't need to mention Brexit to you and the potential impacts that will have uh, on our population patterns over, over the coming years. We've got seven cities now, Glasgow being the largest of those, and the capital is Edinburgh. There's about 42 miles between Glasgow and, and Edinburgh, which is on the east coast, Glasgow in the west. We've got lots of islands, um, 790, but 94 of those are populated, and you can see there the range of population to one lonely person on a very small island to Shetland Islands, which is our largest uh, populated set of islands. And we've got lots of coastline as well uh, for such a, a small um, geographic space. In terms of demographic shift, it's nothing unusual if we, we compare to, to, to Western um, profiles. You can see the, the increase in, in older populations, um, an ongoing increase in average life and healthy life expectancy. And at the bottom, you can see there the difference between boys and girls. So boys born in 2015 expecting to live to just under 77, and girls likewise to 81. And again, you can see the, the slight differences in healthy years as well. But um, again, these are these are these are these are fairly average for 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 Europe at least. How how we are governed? We have got our own. Scottish Parliament, we of course are part of the UK, but we have got our own Parliament, we've got our own government as well, and at a local level we've got 32 municipalities. As far as how we manage our public health and health care, health care and treatment is spread over 14 territorial NHS boards, that's geographic boards. We've got eight special boards where it's deemed appropriate to manage a, a national scale. Um, and in terms of how we manage our public health at a national scale, that is through NHS Health Scotland, that's the organisation I work for. We've got four directorates, and the place portfolio sits within the Health Equity Directorate. On the right-hand side there, you'll, you'll see our Chief Executive, Jerry McLaughlin, and to the left of, um, or to the right of him, is uh, the, the Theory of Health there, Scotland. What we have all of that, which is our corporate plan, what will be happening at the end of this year, we will be coming together with two other of the of the special boards to create Public Health Scotland. And this brings in our Health Protection Board and also a board that's responsible for health information. 
At a national level, I think there's, a, there's an important point to make that in, in terms of our national performance framework, we're measuring how we deliver across a whole range of public services. We align our measurement framework with the Sustainable Development Goals, and indeed one of the, the first countries to do so. Um, you'll see there that's a, a picture of our, our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. So on to place health and inequalities, and I said many of you will be familiar with this, but it's just really to, to reassure you where our theory sits with the agenda that we're taking forward here. So in terms of, of place, it's the combination of the physical environment and the social environment, um, and the quality of life that comes from the interaction between both of those components. And that was a definition that we applied for the Creating Places um, policy document um, on, on architecture in 2013. The theory that we apply within our own organization to shape our overall business is based on this um, theoretical origin of health inequalities. And, and starting from the left-hand side, you can see the fundamental causes that drive our, our, our health and well-being um, in terms of these global drivers, what's, what's normal within societies. The political priorities for certain countries or indeed even um, municipalities and the, the incredible impact that equality and power has on, on people's well-being. Now those fundamental causes in turn shape the environments that are created for us and from that will determine what lifestyles and experiences we can expect to achieve through those particular environments. And eventually that plays out in terms of our general well-being, how long we expect to live healthily for, the diseases that we experience, and of course when we die. How that's played out, I and mean, we could pull up figures all day, I and mean, here's, here's some extreme examples, and, and many of you will be familiar with Sierra Leone, which experienced civil war at the beginning of the millennium, hence the reason for that explanation around that very low life expectancy. Of course, it's not just life expectancy, it's, it's inequalities as well, and inequalities that can exist within a, a very um, small geographic area. This is a picture of Glasgow's underground system, and on your left-hand side, uh, Jordan Hill, Hindland, and Partick, these are our affluent communities. And if you make your way down that green um, train line, you'll get to Bridgeton, which is one of our poorer communities in Glasgow. And this illustration is just to show that at every stop you make, you take 1.7 years of your life expectancy if you're a male. Um, now, of course, you can jump back on the train and go in the opposite direction, um, but that doesn't necessarily you'll add that amount of time onto your life. But that distance is probably about six miles maximum. And look at the difference between males, 75.8, when it was then, this, this data was pulled together in the early 2000s, and 61 um, on the east side of the city. Significant uh, differences. In fact, if you were to go to one of the communities in the east end, male life expectancy is as low as 55 years. And in terms of healthy life expectancy, again, this is this is an illustration. It's, it's not the most up-to-date data, but there's still the same statistics will play out. This is healthy life expectancy related to income and employment index. And again, the most deprived decile and the least deprived decile, you can see significant differences in, in the gap of when people would expect to live healthily for. And that plays across both males and females. So that, that's the theor theoretical basis for the, for the design of the tool itself. At a policy level, the tool came from two key documents. One was Good Places, Better Health, which would made a commitment to develop a neighbourhood standard, and Creating Places, which I've already mentioned in 2013, which made a commitment to develop a place standard for Scotland. Sometimes in your career, you can be quite lucky when you're given a piece of work to, to carry forward. So I wasn't involved in the design of the tool, but I was asked to deliver the tool across Scotland. Um, that same year in 2015, we had community empowerment legislation, and that placed a legal requirement on municipalities to engage with communities in developing their local plans. 
The next step was, well, what will we use to engage with communities? And the Play Standard tool, which was launched a few months later, was a perfect solution for many of those. What we also benefited from is we already had an established set of national standards for how to engage with communities to ensure that inequalities are kept to a minimum. In terms of political leadership, the, the tool was eventually launched um, after two years of development on the 10th of December 2015 by our Cabinet Secretary for Social Justice, Communities and Pensioners' Rights. And, um, if we then match that up with theory, we've got a couple of things here. One around the, the political priority that's given to, to community engagement and the political priority in terms of launching something such as this tool, but also the legislation that was very much revolving around equality and power. So already we've got the match between the tool and the fundamental causes for health and health inequalities. In terms of the features of the tool itself, um, the, the, the overarching principle is, is really to deliver high quality places, maximising physical and social environments, which in turn, as I've, I've shown in the diagrams, supports health, well-being and, and improved quality of life. And in terms of our process, the Place Standard tool is all about having the right conversations with the right people at the right time to make their places better. In terms of what it is, it's a, it's a simple, it's a free to easy use tool uh, to assess the quality of place. You can have it in different formats and I'll show a number of very event, inventive ways of using the tool. Uh, but you can have it as an online app, it's, it's an online tool. There's of course the paper version as well. It helps conversations to talk about place, what, what, what drives a uh, place in terms of what works well and what needs improving upon. And there's 14 dimensions um, that, that, this, that we consider to be the key elements of place, both from a physical and from a social perspective. So these are, these are the, 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 the areas, and, you, and in terms of physical environments, the, the, the first uh, set of dimensions are, are very familiar with. As we move down, there's, there are obviously aspects around how a place is governed, but it also deals with a lot of the social aspects, which traditionally tend not to be um, discussed as, as fully as the physical features of a place. So social interaction, identity and belonging, a sense of feeling safe, and, and the area that I've touched on before is that, that sense of control and influence of how a place is designed. Now you'll see also on the right hand side that the key question that, that is asked when using the tool isn't a complex question. Um, so in moving around, we could have had a question asking, talking about green travel or active travel. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to make the tool as accessible as possible, hence the reason why we ask a headline question such as, can I easily walk and cycle around using good quality routes? And, and that's a question that anyone can, can get engaged and have a discussion around. So how to use the tool itself. So many of you may have clicked on, on the link and, and, and seen the, the online version. But really it's about working through each of the, the 14 dimensions, having a conversation around that key question and some of the supplementary questions if, if the discussion goes a bit quiet. Then you capture all the data and you can create individual scores or if you're doing a workshop, you can create a, an overall score. Of course, it's very important that you apply good standards of how you engage with communities uh, and, and fellow professionals as well when doing that, because it, of course, it will create a whole range of different results if that's not managed properly. So you work through the 14 dimensions and you, you, you get your shape of, of, the, of the spider diagram, but you also get lots and lots of data to work across that works across the key dimensions that impact on health and wellbeing. Now, here's four examples, but it could be the same place. It could actually be carried out by the same person, but they could have assessed their place in the morning, afternoon, or evening, or the weekends, or when they were in a, in a particular mood. Um, it could also be the same place, but by different age groups or different populations. So um, it, it really emphasizes that places can change and places can be different to so many 
different people, different ages, different populations, and at different times of the day and different times of the year. This is, these are some examples of some of our areas within Scotland. This is, this is South Lanarkshire, and again, same place, but a diversity of, of results. So on your right hand side, you can see how we manage that diversity and been able to highlight and, and look where there's significant range of, of um, feeling around particular dimensions and where there is commonality of um, opinion. Here's another example again here, and this is a different way of illustrating the range of, of what works well and of course what needs improving upon. So where the compass diagram, the, the closer the, the score is to the centre, that being one, the more improvement that's required. The closer the score it goes to the outer part of the circle, that's where the place is working well uh, in the opinion of the people who or the person who scored. Here's another example, and again, it's showing you how you can then begin to look at the priorities for action where certain dimensions are, are coming close together. In this example, um, it's around the priorities to, to improve influence and sense of control, housing, and plain recreation. And, and this is just an illustration of the sort of things that will come up. But of course, if you're working with hundreds of individuals within the community, you get generate lots of really, really good ideas. Now, I, I spoke about different population scoring. This is, this is an example in, in Arbroath, which is um, on the east coast of, of Scotland. It's a coastal town. And the, the box in the middle illustrates the part where the place standard tool was delivered by professionals only who have got a responsibility for the town centre. And we were testing at that time a score of one to five. As you'll see here, according to the professional our growth works really, really well. But to be fair, it does require lots of improving. So again, it's important to recognize an element of bias can, can come in depending on who's um, using the tool. To be fair to my colleagues in the Angus Council area um, or the Angus municipality, um, they, after further reflection, they were able to generate lots and lots of, of new ideas of how they can actually further improve the areas that they gave top results to. Where or when to use a place standard, here's are examples of, of it being applied in the early stages of, of development, the design and development of, of a, a new area. But where it's been used most so far is continuous improvement, that's within established communities, to look at how they can uh, make things better within their, their village, town, or parts of their city. So back to, back to the theory very quickly, you'll see that the dimensions that were highlighted within the tool deal with those key areas around environment and individual experience. If you, if you want the 90 second version of all that, please go on to the Play Standard YouTube channel and you'll get an animated video. It's a very quick way of, 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 of sharing the, the, the overall approach and what the tool's all about to, you, to your colleagues. So feel free to do that. Um, but moving on to planning and governance, I mean, how, how do we take this uh, simple, easy to use tool and, and roll it out at scale across the country? Well, one of the first tasks I took on was to develop a, an implementation plan over three years and also to create a structure for overseeing its delivery. So the Play Standard Implementation Board is chaired by our Chief Architect for Scotland. I chair the Play Standard Implementation Group. And there's a series of working groups that take forward big parts of our plan. On the left-hand side, local delivery processes, we've got a place standard lead in each of our municipalities, all 32 of those. And on the right-hand side, we've got the place standard lines. And, and this is about 120 people who come together every six months to, to provide updates on the tool, to share uh, lessons learned and good practice, and really to really benefit from the networking um, across the country. The plan itself has got an overarching outcome and, and really the, the, the main focus is making sure that we've got east, increased application of the tool within, within geographic communities and populations where inequalities is at its highest. And, and we make sure that, that we really dedicate our resource to, to doing that. 
nine outcomes within the plan, no great surprises. These would apply to any national program of work in terms of the areas of work we need to take forward around leadership, maximising legislation, making sure there's capacity to use the tool, that people know about it. Um, that we really have a, a, a very strong improvement cycle to learn from the lessons learned. Also look at where, where money has been invested in place and where in fact the place standard tool can shape that thinking. Um, and laterally, the international relationship, and I'll touch on that when I'm sharing uh, examples of practice. So from our, our place standard launch in December 2015, we've, we've got that structure in place, we've generated lots of activity, lots of lessons learned, and in June this year, we, we start all over again with a new three-year plan. So the, the delivering at scale part, the, the, the main challenge of taking this forward, the main message, um, the application just continues to increase all the time. And as you can see in that picture, there's a lot of creative thinking of how to use the tool from a chalkboard to, to, to the large scale sort of twister uh, pullout. Um, on the top left hand side, that was for primary school children. They wanted to, to they developed that and, and they wanted to use it that way. Um, we've got the app, of course, and I will explain the Terrapin in the middle uh, as, as I go through my slides. In terms of Scotland, this is a massive underestimate, but it gives you a, a, an illustration of where the tool has been used. Um, number of projects doesn't mean that there's more people. Aberdeenshire Council is a very rural area, so that will probably cover a number of, of smaller villages. Whereas if we go to cities such as Edinburgh City Council, I mean, these are very large areas that have used the tool itself. I know it's an underestimate because I continue to visit these areas and they talk about um, projects being delivered way in excess of the numbers that they've actually reported on. We need to improve that data return uh, significantly. In terms of what it's used for, um, as I said at the beginning, we had legislation that placed a requirement to develop locality plans, and you'll see the term LOIP, that is a local outcome improvement plan for each municipality. Place plans as well, and also local development plans, these, these are all plans that are municipality based. So again, the tool was, has really provided the opportunity to embed that into their way of working. As I said, it's an underestimate of our scores, and you can see the amount of activity that's going on our online tool, uh, right to the point of people are actually using it to buy a home and <laughs> assess the quality of their place, that they are, that, of the homes that they're looking at. In terms of process, pl please log on to the Health Scotland website if you want to find out some of the early lessons that were generated in terms of using the tool. And on the Architecture and Design Scotland website, there's lots of good case studies that illustrate its use at different scales, um, both in terms of neighbourhood site and uh, at larger city scales. Now, here's an example of coverage. And um, in terms of our local development plan for each municipality, that's informed by what's called a main issues report. And this is a traditional way of consultation that the planners in Dundee City Council took forward. Um, and the big blue circles are very affluent areas um, within Dundee. Um, and so consultation would tend to be quite high there. They decided to use the place standard tool uh, with the same level of resource, the same amount of time. And this is the coverage that was generated as a consequence of that. And whilst our two affluent areas in the West End and Broughty Ferry also increased, um, they were also a, a significant increase in people who tend to not contribute to the main issues report. So that, that was extremely pleasing from, from a council perspective. Again, if you, if you prefer your, your, your case studies in, in media formats, we've got a number of case studies that are on the YouTube channel, and there's a really good one if we're where school children have used it. And it really um, not only showed its diversity and its application, but it also was, it was really helpful for a number of pupils who would not normally get involved in this sort of thing. At an international level, we have, it's, it's really increased significantly. We, we had our master class in September 2017, um, and that was with our European Healthy City Network leads. Um, 
and following from that, Belfast were one of the, one of the, the first to, to take the work on after a second workshop, which was held in Glasgow with our UK Healthy Cities Network. Um, no surprises, it's raining in Belfast, but um, that's just a bit like Glasgow as well. But again, a really uh, fantastic event. These, these are senior uh, professionals and elected members who took part in the workshop, and now it's going to be rolled off out across the city and in the surrounding areas. Carlisle, likewise, again, a, a workshop with, with uh, executive staff and, and the picture on your right-hand side, that's a, the, the deputy chief executive and also the leader of the council that were being trained to use the tool itself. Carlisle's in the north of England. Denmark, we were in Sydenhaven, South Harbour, um, and again, we used a chalkboard this time working with homeless communities. Um, and we can see there Denmark being creative as ever with a climbing wall going up one of their church steeples. It was just a little worrying that there was a hertz at the bottom with the door open, but um, I'm sure that was pure coincidence rather than any uh, risk management process we've got going in, in, in Copenhagen. Um, but from that, they, they were so impressed by its use. They've now, they are now investing two and a half years of funding, working across a whole number of areas within within uh, Denmark, and we really look forward to learning from from their application. In Kaunas in Lithuania, council approval to to use the tool as well within a living city neighbourhoods. If we Go further north, one country up, we go to Latvia, and again, this is a, a, a really good research project. Um, and the results were, and lessons learned, really mirrored what was going on within Scotland and other countries as well. Um, and of course, now we've got a, a Latvian version of, of the tool. In Karposh in Skopje, it, it was used as well with. with monies that were received and um, they were also received in Latvia, the monies, EU monies were received by Skopje in, in Macedonia. Um, and again, very similar approaches. It just really emphasised its transferability, the focus groups working, interviews with people with a disability, um, working with a whole range of different um, stakeholder groups and, and successfully generating a range of results. Um, and the priorities that were identified for citizens were these key areas. Um, the one in the middle, heavy traffic and parking, was, was something that was really predicted, but it was great to get that confirmed by communities and professionals. I'll just go through this quickly because I see that time's now upon us in terms of moving into the, into the conversation. But the, the, the main message that the lessons learned and the challenges were, were very much similar to what we were experiencing. And this headline, Remarks and Comments More Important Than Scores. I, I could have really taken away the way this was happening, and my, my colleagues in Scotland would, would probably think these lessons have been generated by, by just a few miles away rather than a few countries away. And I, I had the pleasure of then meeting with the mayor of, of Car Posh, and, and it was quite surreal sitting down and talking about planning for priorities uh, next business year, uh, thousands of miles away with the mayor. Uh, of, of Karposh district of Skopje. Um, other training that's happened as well, we, we had a, a large workshop in Antalya in Turkey, and this was the moment that WHO said, we really want to look at how we can roll this out, not just in Europe, but globally. If you go to the picture at the, in the center, we've got one of my colleagues from Finland, who is translating the play standard tool from English into Finnish, and then she has to do another translation into Russian, because the colleagues there from Latvia and Moscow. And despite all these translations, she was able to, to facilitate a working group along with others, and within a city that nobody had been in before, within a couple of hours, we were able to generate so much information around the city. And this information was then passed on to the town planners. Now, the Terrapin was one of the things that we experienced on our travels. It was trying to get from one pond to another. So it's not something we tend to record in Scotland, but it was one of the priorities. How do we make travel for Terrapins uh, safer? Um, 
The other joke that, that was um, floating at the time was that um, the, the group that I was in that completed the tool cheated and just drew around the terrapin. and I can assure you that was not the case at all. That is the shape of the, the play standard tool and, and remarkably very similar to our Scottish island communities where in Antalya had access to a very mountainous region um, but public transport was not used mainly because it was so hot and people prefer to use cars. Um, and so th that, that sort of played out in overall scores there. Quickly, in Netherlands, they were one of the first to translate the, 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 the play standard tool after coming to Glasgow and seeing it being applied there. And they tried it out in, in schools and in, in municipality meetings and fairs. They did a lot of work around uh, local media and they renamed it the Click Monitor. There's not an actual translation of place in, in Dutch, so that was that, that was the closest they, they got to that work. But following that, they revised it again. Not much change to the original tool, scores of one to 10 rather than one to seven, renamed it the Leaf Click Meter, and I was delighted to be at the launch in May of, of last year. And this is one of the quotes from the, from the, the people who attended the, the event. They provided this quote to the media before. Uh, going in to, to be part of the launch. But just then, I mean, there's so much going on. I've just got I've just an email there from Norway. They're, want, they're now rolling it out. We've got a children's adaptation, which is happening as a consequence of a Dutch-German collaborative and the Turkish network of Three Healthy Cities after another workshop in Bursa. That's now taking place. I'll rush through this very quickly, but it's just to show that how it strategically it's now sitting within WHO and in particular, its relationship with the sustainable development goals. The, the six dimensions for the Who Healthy Cities on the outer circle are based on the sustainable development goals. It's a, it's a smaller framework to develop, to deliver on those. But in this illustration, you can see where the Play Standard tool has a direct um, relationship with all 17 there. Um, and again, that, that really, really, not only transferability, of how to use the tool, but it's a way of practically looking at work around these significant strategic uh, dimensions of the SDGs. As I said in my introduction to Tina introduced, I, I chair the group that's looking at place and we're really looking forward to seeing how we can develop a whole range of, of, of different um, case studies in its application and how the tool can have a direct impact on the sustainable development goal uh, agenda. These are, these are the, the key areas within the working group as well that we hope to deliver over the next few years. And coming to the end, just really to say as well, it's a tool that's also been recognised by town planners across the UK and we're delighted to win this award in 2017. We continue to make improvements. We will have different versions emerging this year and, and news of that will be provided at our international conference that will take place on June the 10th in Glasgow. So, sorry for using 35 minutes instead of 30, but just really to conclude that what we've got here is a tool that takes quite complex public health placemaking theory and translating it into something that, as you saw there, school kids in the in Netherlands can, can, can use and, and school kids across a whole number of different areas as well. It places people at the heart of decision making uh, and in a very structured way by getting people and professionals to talk about the things that we know have an impact on our health and well-being. It's become a highly reputable product and process, but despite that, we are committed to making improvements and extending its relevant application. And internationally, it's got a practical alignment with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And you might be thinking, well, why pick out bursas? <laughs> Who Healthy City Phase 7 ambitions? That's because I didn't update the conclusion from my last presentation in Turkey. So my apologies for that. But, but generally, um, in terms of Who Healthy Cities globally, it, it will certainly have uh, a helpful relationship to deliver on the agendas that take place in, in all six UN regions. So thank you very much um, for bearing with me. I, I hope that's been helpful and of course we're really looking forward to the, the discussion then. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. That was an excellent presentation. I was really excited to hear about this excellent and uh, really easy to use tool that helps to bring in people in their communities and engage them and to find out what they think their community should look like.
So uh, we'll start with questions from people online. Um, if anybody has any questions for John, feel free to either speak up on the phone or um, type them into the chat box. And while we wait for our questions to come in, um, we can move on to discussion questions as well. Um, so just a question from me, John. Um, so it looks like the tool has been implemented in a lot of countries and a lot of cities across Europe. Have you heard any feedback from any of them about um, any challenges they have had um, with regards to implementing the tool in different contexts, different cities, different geographic and different demographic regions? Yeah, I mean, I, um, as I try to illustrate in, in, in the presentation, the lessons that are being generated in Europe are very similar to the lessons <clears throat> that we've been generating within Scotland as well. And one of the, the key drivers of just place-based working generally um, is to ensure that you get strong leadership. And where the tool has been implemented successfully, not only in terms of gathering information, but then how the results have responded to, um, is mainly where strong leadership has been shown, where municipalities have, have, have declared a, a commitment to using the tool as part of their improvement process. And so right from the outset, they're prepared to receive results from communities and for them to respond to that in a positive manner in terms of then translating those ambitions, what works well, what needs improving upon within their local plans and budget, budget planning for the future. I mean, clearly, generally around community engagement and development, there, there will be barriers for certain populations and for certain age groups to engage as, effect, as, as effectively as other ones. And that's why I, I, I try to highlight within the implementation plan for the tool that we will concentrate our, our support and our resources within communities, geographic communities, and populations where support is needed most. We're able to do that focus mainly because within Scotland, at least, we have got what's called locality plans, and those locality plans focus on our most deprived um, geographic area. So that, that provides us uh, a ready list of places to, to concentrate on. We, we also have to remember that we have to, we have to manage expectations, and I think in, in terms of any effective facilitation, of, of using the tool that has to be spelt out right from the offset. But again, we've got standards for community engagement that people refer to when working with communities directly and face to face. Um, so I think the, the main message is the lessons are common irrespective of where the tool is being used. Great, thank you. Uh, so just a question came in online. Um, can you please talk about some of the engagement tools and strategies you use to get people on board and use the tool? Okay, well, I mean, there's, there's lots of things that you can you, you can do to increase uh, engagement. I think one is to to use varied methods. So in Shetland Islands, which is a large geographic spread of many islands, but three main populated ones, they decided to use an online tool um, for for the place standards, so they were able to gather data in a very effective way. But then they also combined it with a series of site visits to ensure that people who were, did not have digital access could also contribute in, in other ways. Standard good community development approaches is going to where people are. So rather than inviting people to a central location, think about where your most vulnerable communities are and go to those places. Um, Working directly within schools as well means that you've got a way of, of working um, most effectively with, with children. Um, and it can sometimes be built into their, their actual learning. So within Scotland, we've got an eco schools program. And for many, using the place standard tool is something that, that's embedded into that uh, learning for the day. Um, I think clearly in terms of different formats, this is what we're wanting to do as part of the improvement program, different languages, Braille um, is important, app versions as well, and make, making our app version more, more accessible for people. Um, 
And of course, just be realistic around timescales. Um, you know, it's really important to set aside enough time to um, use the tool effectively across a whole range of different populations, life stages, and a whole range of different settings, rather than rush through it and then have to spend more time at the end of the day when you get the plans wrong. And, and I think we're, all of us on this call today have probably had experience of that. Um, but the, 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 I'm sure the presentation will be shared. And, and, and really, if you, if you click on the National Standards for Community Engagement, you'll get a whole breakdown of um, good ways of working and, and a checklist of, of what to, to use when, when engaging effectively, albeit with this tool or any other tool. OK, thank you. Um, so moving on to discussion questions, the first question is, um, so what are the challenges of successfully embedding a place-based approach into design and management of our built environment? Does anybody have any comments um, to add to this question? I think a lot of us are trying to just, uh, are, 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 it's our first time hearing about this tool, so we're all um, digesting the content yeah. and figuring <laughs> out how it might be applicable to our communities. Yeah, um, I, I would. I would just while whilst people are thinking, I, I could speak all day about this. But the best way to actually get a real sense of what the tool is all about is to use it, um, and, and that's the reason why, irrespective of how senior um, our colleagues are, um, we we always build into our our pitch a practical learning exercise, and the feedback is always. That was the most important part of the day, is actually using the tool for yourself and really beginning to realize how powerful it is for informing um, policy, strategic planning, right down to operational day-to-day -day delivery. Mm -hmm. So if you've got time today, please, please go out, to, even if it's just around your office, and, and I, I'll assure you that you will never look at that place in the same way again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Diane online, Diane Oiko from NCCDH says, um, challenges would be mostly perception-based. Lack of knowledge about the tool, perception that there is no time. It is a change in way of thinking about how we do the work we do. Yes, I mean, the, I, I think the, the, it's, it's where you, and this is part of the, the negotiation. If you, if you were to take a look at a development, a new development with an urban setting, and not take a look at the time it takes to consult, but take about, think about the overall time it takes to create a place that people will um, enjoy living, learning, working in. And then from that point, thinking, well, how do we get to that point? What, what informs our design, design decisions? And from that perspective, it, it should quickly people should quickly realize that if you don't get the front end correct what's going to happen at the end is going to be a poor a poor place that people will not enjoy being in and you may spend even more time trying to rectify things so it's, it's a in relative terms it's a very small investment to to for investors to be as informed as they possibly can and of course one way of doing that is to speak to the people who eventually are going to use that place, but to do it in a very um, all-encompassing manner and not just asking people about one or two dimensions of a place, but the tool encourages people to look at the place in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So on a related note, another question online um, asks, what, what internal resources are needed in order to make best use of the results that are generated from the tool? So I think, yeah, it, 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 that's a valid point because um, sometimes we just don't have the resources even though we have all these results from um, that are generated from a tool, but what types of resources do we need to actually implement these, these tools and how do we prioritize the results that come from the tool? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think in terms of the resource, the tool itself, it's free. I mean, it's there to use. There's no need to register and pay for a download or be a me be a member. It's of, of, a, of a particular organisation. The tool you can use it right now for nothing. Um, and with our extending work with WHO, we will hope, hopefully, we will we'll, we'll be seeking accreditation of the tool. And from that point, it will be in a whole number of different languages. And um, just now, so the product itself is free. Think, think about 
your your resource as your with what you're currently working with. Right now, we have got public sector budgets, multi-million pound public sector budgets. There's multi-million pound private investments as well. The question is, well, how is that spend shaped? It's always going to sit there, um, but how, how will that spend be, be designed and how it will be shaped? And so the, the only additional investment we're really looking for is building the capacity for people to use their time differently and to use their budgets differently. So I, I, I don't know how it is in Canada, but certainly within Scotland and, and the municipalities, we've got staff who've got a responsibility for engaging with communities. Um, so that resource is there already for that conversation to take place. But okay. what the Play Standard Tool is saying is, this is the structure of that conversation. Um, so it's just really changing the narrative using the existing resources. And when the when the recommendations are made, again, it's just changing the narrative around some design solutions using the money that's already in the system. Right, right. John, are you seeing the chat box comments coming in? Well, I... All right, okay, I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of straining here because I'm at the end of the table and my, my TV screen's away along at the other end as well. They, they did pop up there, but um, maybe if I expand this. Uh, I okay, know. I think if you click on the speech bubble window in the control panel, you right. should be able to. Right, can you? Right, okay. So the next question is can you speak a little bit more about how the 14 dimensions or the questions seem to be included in the tool? Oh, I, I always knew there was going to be a question that Etif, if she was here, could answer. That's my colleague who's, who's been caught up in other things. But yes, I mean, our public health, my public health science colleagues within the organisation, Architecture and Design Scotland, which is a, um, a, is, a, a, is a national body, Scottish Government, Architecture and Planning, and Etif, who is not here today, spent two years um, Thinking around the social determinants, thinking about what what drives the what dimensions drive place um, and architecture, and so there was lots of, of negotiation around what they should be. There was there was sixteen, there was ten dimensions, it then went up to a higher number, and then the, it was it was tested, piloted in a number of communities within Scotland. So the example I gave of our growth that was a, a score of one to five. Um, finally settled for one to seven. So it, it was two years of piloting that went into that final design. And currently we're, we've got an improvement program. One of my team uh, have, has carried out a, a, you know, a significant evaluation. And now we're looking at the recommendations for further improvements to the tool. I don't think the 14 dimensions will change much, but some of the supplementary questions to inform the discussion around those 14 dimensions probably will. And there will be some changes around accessibility as well. So um, it, it's fair to say that there was considerable investment in getting us to that, that 14 dimension points. But it is very much around the social determinants of health and the theory that I, that I presented in my presentation. Okay. Um, another question from Diane, just uh, asking about what you just said. Um, um, she says, could you please repeat what you just said? She missed the second part. The only extra investment being requested is to the youth, is, is to use the resources differently. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean the, the main message is that there's a significant resource within, within the public and, and private system. Um, and within Scotland, there, there is investment in processes for staff to engage with communities to find out what they would like to see improving within their local area and for that information then to be shared with municipalities. It's what the tool is doing is just creating um, structure to that conversation rather than it just being an open conversation. So it's a, it's a conversation around those 14 areas. So the actual resource required to have that new conversation doesn't require any more money. Um, it just needs a, a, a sort of rephrasing of the conversation that's taking place. In terms of m money used to spend on the solutions, 
we've got money already in place for for roads and and for houses and for, for, for public buildings. And um, what the tool is is doing is just reshaping the the design of how that money will be spent. So that that was my main point around money being in the system, but it being informed better by having a range of tools that, that such as the place standard tool to um, help with the design of that investment. Okay, thank you. So the next discussion question, um, what factors have proven to be effective in addressing some of these challenges? Okay, well, I mean, I mean certainly I, I would say there's, there's an importance if, if, if this is something we'd want to run out at a large municipality level and uh, or a national level, a regional level or, or, or state. Um, it's really to have that, that structure in place from from national oversight and, and a plan to shape the, the range of investments that are required to be made to deliver what effects is a very simple tool, but also to have local leads within the areas as that, that conduit between national policy and strategy and local delivery. And what, the way we organize that, and of course we're, we're talking about a much smaller country, is that within, within my national team, I've allocated to, to team members a set number of municipalities to, to be the lead person for, and they team up with their equivalent at a local level. So this really creates that, that good dialogue between national and local. And to sort of mirror a very similar process at a local level as well, so making sure that taking forward the place standard tool that there is leadership there, so municipality buy-in, that, that can be signed off by local politicians, that um, the practitioners using it and communities using it, are, 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 their capacity is, is increased through, through learning programs. Um, but we really make sure that we can constantly learn uh, of our lessons and embed that into any improvements. There's also some other things that can practically take it forward. So for example, if you've got um, budgets um, that get spent every year where communities require to apply for that budget, perhaps one of your criteria could be that, that um, communities use the place standard tool to shape their application um, and, and be supported to do that. There could be other things as well where you're maybe taking a look at best practice in Canada around how to engage with communities. And, and mm. perhaps as part of that criteria, it could be around uh, an award around innovative mechanisms of, of engagement and the use of the place standard tool might be considered one of those. So there's lots of different drivers you could use to this application. Thanks. Um, next question. Does anybody in the audience have experience um, implementing or uh, working on a place-based approach in your communities, um, engaging your uh, community members, um, figuring out what they need, and incorporating those needs and uh, requests into your city plans or you know into decisions you make for your community? So while um, you think about uh, your comments. Um, we have another question that just came in. Could you elaborate with some examples of how communities have taken different decisions based on the results of the tool? Okay. Um, well, what, what I mean, I, what I can perhaps do, Tina, is actually share with with your with the forum a, a couple of case studies that would that would, okay. would take the reader right through from that point of a municipality saying, yes, we use the tool to, yeah, to the primary identified. I'll, I'll share a couple of links. I think that'd be a very way of illustrating it rather than me talking through it. But okay. clearly, 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 if you're engage, going to engage effectively with communities and use something as diverse as this in the entirety of place, you do develop a whole range of, of, of different proposals. Um, and what we are at the stage at now is looking at what has been the actual impact as a consequence of the tool. What would not have happened if the tool was not used? And so that, that, that's, that, that's the stage we are at with our learning. Um, but the, it's the diversity of, of, of next steps is, is massive. Um, so, but I, I will send a couple of links to, to some case studies that I think would really help 
people who are interested in applying the tool themselves within within Canada. Yeah, that would be great. And if you could also share the process evaluation report, that would also be um, very helpful too. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're running out of time a little bit. Uh, we're moving on to the next question. Uh, would the play standard tool and process offer an additional mechanism to successfully enable an effective play-based approach in Canada? Um, so I'm not sure if uh, anybody in uh, the audience would be able to respond to that. Um, people who might have more experience um, implementing uh, I guess programs or policies in their communities, and um, so would you, do you think the play standard tool would offer a, a good uh, um, um, an additional mechanism to help you enable an effective place based approach in your community? So in Canada, I think. Um, a tool that came out of BC, especially uh, the Healthy Built Environment Languages Toolkit, has been widely used in many communities in Canada. And I think the Play Center tool would be a great uh, supplement to complement this tool in many communities that are currently using um, the toolkit. Uh, does anybody have any comments about how this, this uh, Play Center tool might be able to uh, complement? your use of the linkages toolkit in your communities or in your provinces? I'm just waiting for comments to come in. <laughs> I, I, I guess it is a tough question, especially because we haven't all had a chance to really look at the place data tool and how that might be used. Yeah, I, I think, Tina, if, if we were to repeat this call, say, in six months' time with maybe a commitment of with, with a few people to to try it for themselves, and I said it doesn't really take long. I've, I've run a workshop within half an hour, um, and um, it was a case of meeting people in a foyer and walking around a, a couple of streets with the tool, then generating a massive amount of information of what worked well for, for two or three individuals. And, and, and the three individuals I worked with, one, two, one was was um, was blind and another person was a wheelchair user. So it, it, was, um, it was fascinating of, of how that same place that I was familiar with day in, day out, just became something totally different as a consequence of, of, of those individuals mm -hmm. sharing their perspectives on that same place. So my, my, as I said earlier as well, that um, I could speak all day, but the best way I've been able to answer that third question would be to use the tool and, and, and just share um, thoughts. And I'd be delighted to hear from anyone who uses the tool and, and, and share their experience with, with us. John, uh, this is Salima. I do have a question. So if there is a dimension that has a lower score, are there recommendations that are built into the tool that you would want a community to take? Or is it more of a collaborative process where people can identify mechanisms of increasing that area? Yeah, I mean, it, it tends to be fairly collaborative, but what we have to also remember is that, that um, where, where you've got um, a low score being shared by a number of people, and I, I would say things such as sense of control tends to score fairly low. Um, I mean, there, there are things that obviously can be done there, and, that, and, and in many ways, a place standard tool addresses some of it because it is actually increasing collaboration and engagement. Um, but the range of scores are just as important as the average scores because it shows the diversity of need within the community, but it also shows to people who maybe have not considered the needs of other populations within the community before to become more aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. So it is very much a case of of working through the process, making sure you've got effective representation of, of that community, and that you share, you, you play the results back, and then have further dialogue in terms of identifying what the priorities are, and um, what the priorities are maybe for a few people, but are very important, and if they're addressed, they would meet the needs of everyone. And of course, then moving on to the point in terms of what's the practical way of addressing those things. And again, if, if you've got buy-in from leadership and main agencies right from the outset, then 
there's an expectation that they will from them that they will be receiving a whole range of ideas to have to respond to, as opposed to them being caught uh, on the back foot, uh, and and that itself can create a, a lot of tension. Um, so uh, the collaboration both from professionals and communities, elected members, um, is, is vital in using the tool. Thank you. Thanks, John. So, yes, uh, a few comments came in. Um, some regions have strong connections uh, between walk score and diabetes and um, cardiovascular disease, and these extra dimensions in the play center tool will be very useful um, in their community as well. Um, some others have said, um, um, the toolkit in Canada has been helpful because it, it provides um, literature research evidence uh, for linkages between um, built environment and health. Um, but the Play Center tool also provides um, an interactive space workshop method to engage people in the community. So that's it. it will be a great compliment. Um, go ahead, John. Just want to no, 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 thank no, no, no. Please, please continue, Tina. Um, so, yes, it offers an additional mechanism. Um, it takes a complex process and makes it user-friendly. Um, I can see this being highly beneficial for, pe for people working on a community level to identify opportunities and challenges within the community. And finally, uh, I think it could, uh, uh, could support um, an IAP to consult consultative approach with communities during master planning processes, for example, um, official community plans, master transportation plans, etc. Okay, so um, that's all the comments that we have so far for the um, additional discussion questions. And unfortunately, we're run out of time. If you have more comments, feel free to um, post them to the forum. And the recording of the web webinar will also be posted to the forum as well as the slides. So feel free to take uh, some time to watch the webinar if you want to look at the slides in more detail. I know we, we were a little bit short on time today. And thank you so much, John, for uh, taking time to present, to, to talk to us about the Play Center tool, I think it'll be a great tool that can be used in many, in many Canadian communities. Yes, it's been a, it's been a real pleasure to, to share our experience and, and thank you so much for the interaction as well and, 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 and the excellent questions. And of course, please get in touch with me directly if, if you want to, to discuss this, this further. Uh, and as, as I promised, I'll share a couple of links, Tina, as well. Um, do, I, do I need to share the presentation or have you got that? Recorded. Um, if you can send me your if you can send me your slides, that'd be great. I have the webinar already, but uh, a copy of your slides to post as a PDF would be excellent. Okay, I'll do that. Well, thank you, okay. Tina. Thank you, everyone else. Thank you. thank you, everyone. Okay, have a nice day. You too. Bye. Bye.